message comes from Shaila Tachin from Emmanuel Divine Ministries, Florida. Let's talk something about exorcism and deliverance. Seeing the power of God displayed in the driving out of spirits was an important key to an evangelistic ministries of Jesus and the early church. As a matter of fact, this is the type of evangelism ministry that Jesus called us to carry out. And he go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye received, freely give. It says in Matthew 10 is 2. 7 to 8. Public exorcism, which is an important part of evangelism calling. If the demons don't manifest, the people don't get to see the power of God tread down the kingdom of darkness in a visible and tangible ways before the eyes of the people. On the contrary, demons are fallen angels, still subject to the authority of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit in us is a greater than any evil spirits. Because the Holy Spirit himself is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. How demons manifest? It seems every television station has its own tribute to the devil, airing horror movies and Halloween themed episodes of all their shows. Demons manifest themselves in a people in different ways. America's perspective of evil spirits comes from the perverted media and speech, perverted things in the schools, levered, obscene adultery, l l lust, uh, sexual deviations and perversions, pornography, addictions by aggressive, evil, dangerous behaviors, disobedient and rebellious behaviors. Like these, in these things, the demons manifest themselves. Psychiatrists can name as psychosis or any other psychiatric disorder, but it's a spiritual problem or demonic problem. Genesis 6, in which ungodly demons transform themselves into attractive human men. We also referenced Genesis 19, in which the godly angels who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah first appeared the afternoon before where they walked to Lord's house, these godly angels were very attractive human men. This transformation of godly angels in this dimension is evidently so common that the Bible states that some Christians have entertained angels without being aware of it. We can notice in Hebrews 13 is to 2. To those who do not know Christ, demons are indeed fearsome. But notice the authority Jesus Christ has given over even in the most extreme case. It is detailed in the Bible. Mark chapter 5, 2 is to 8 says, When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore not even with chain for he had often been chained hand and foot but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet no one was strong enough to subdue him night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? Swear to God, and you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. In exorcism, we can even use Saint Benedict's medal. It is also called as exorcist medal. It can be used against to destroy the witchcraft and all other diabolical and haunting influences. To impart protection to persons tempted, deluded or tormented by evil spirits. 
to obtain the conversion of sinners into the Catholic Church, especially when they are in the danger of death. To serve as an armor against temptation, to destroy the effects of poison, to secure a timely and healthy birth for children, to afford protection against storms and lighting, to serve as an efficacious remedy for bodily afflictions and means of protection against contagious diseases. How do you use the Saint Benedict medal? On a chain, round the neck, attached to one's rosary. It can also be used to kept in one of the pockets or purse. It can be placed in one's car or home, placed in the foundation of a building, placed in the center of cross. Saint Benedict's crucifix is known as the cross of a happy death, not only because of exorcism properties of the medal and the image of Christ's body, but because of the Saint Benedict's particular patronage based on his death. Saint Anthony taught a prayer to a poor woman who sought help against the temptation of the devil. In original Latin, the prayer says, which can be translated in English, Behold the cross of the Lord, begone all evil powers, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered. Alleluia, Alleluia. Sometimes the exorcism can be failed, but you need to take this warning. In Mark 9, 17 is to 29, the apostles, even using the authority given to them, were not being able to cast out a demon from a possessed boy. Jesus had to do exorcism personally. He criticized the lack of faith and explained that some evil spirits could only come out through prayer and fasting. Acts 19, 13 is to 7 says, Some Jews and seven sons of Sceva tried to exhort a man in the name of Jesus Christ who was preached by the Apostle Paul. But to their disappointment, the possessed man jumped over them, giving them such a beating that they left the place naked and bleeding. First, we realize that to exercise is a difficult job even for the apostles themselves who were authorized by Jesus personally. Now regarding those who are not genuine believers, to try to give orders to an evil spirit is a very high risk that may even cause the evil spirit to take up complete possession of them or anyone present around them. There is an authority to perform exorcism given by the Catholic Church. Only priests are authorized by a bishop may officially to do the Solomon rite of exorcism to persons who after psychological examinations are accepted as being influenced or possessed by evil spirits are in need of an exorcism. There are different types of exorcism and deliverance. Solom. This term is applied to the exorcism done officially under the authority of Catholic Church to a person possessed by evil spirits. A rigorous psychological evaluation must be conducted on that victim to establish if this is a case of possession or a diabolical influence or, a or to determine it is a fraud. The victim must show the typical signs that accompany who are possessed. Among them, the knowledge of the other languages, prediction of the future, blasphemies and abhorrence of holy things such as holy water, salt, blessed oil. He may display supernatural strength, levitation, etc. Only an authorized priest can do exorcism following the official right of the church. The devils or the devils present in the possessed person receive orders from the exorcist to leave and never to come back in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the church in general which received from Christ the promise that the gates of hell would not prevail against it, which says in Matthew 16 is to 18. According to Canon 1172 of the Code of Canon Law, no one may licitly perform exorcism on those who are possessed unless he has obtained particular and express permission from the local auditory and it decrees that the permission is to be granted by the ordinary only to priests who are outstanding in pity, knowledge, prudence and integrity of life. That is said in section 2 of Canon Law. Private 
the faithful of the church may say prayers of deliverance in which they ask divine intervention to cast out the evil influence on any person place or object because of the extreme danger involved and the lack of knowledge about the enemy it is important to know more deeply all about devil and his angels and this is why the church does not allow exorcisms to be done by anyone except by priest officially qualified by a bishop First Peter chapter 5 8 is to 9 says Saint Peter the head of the apostles exhorts us to have discipline and be alert because the devil our adversary is like a roaring lion who is prowling around seeking for someone to devour Saint Peter tells us to resist him by remaining firm in our faith let us then be armed with the great faith in God let us grow in spiritually so that God will listen to our prayers of deliverance How do you prepare yourself before the prayer of deliverance? Just as we are about to be begin a battle, we must sit and study our intelligence on the enemy. We must analyze our weapons and our capacity. We must be totally sure that our battle leads us to victory. To try to fight the devil without knowing the necessary tactics to defeat him is like being unprotected and placing our hands in a beehive or like a playing with fire. First of all, we must be clear about the notion that God is the only one who can overcome the enemy since he alone is superior to the devil. who has been created according to his designs here we really must make use of the work of god not our own since god definitely is the only way for our deliverance again an exorcism is an exclusive matter for a priest duly authorized by the church according to canon 1172 of the code of canon law i repeat we are not going to do do any exorcism but we are going to then prepare ourselves for profound prayer of deliverance which involves the knowledge of all that is mentioned previously above and of the prayers recommended we may also make use of sacramentals such as sac- crucifix contained containing wood it must not be all plastic or metallic holy water holy salt and holy oil The influenced person may pray these prayers although it is probable that enemy will distract him and he may end up doing something else this is why it is recommended that at least two people who are faithful to the church preferably who attend mass daily say the prayers and live righteously avoiding all kinds of sins the day of the prayers they must get together in a place where there won't be other persons who may interrupt or become influenced by the evil one first of all they must talk about god read the holy bible and make available at least 2 to 3 hours to avoid any haste it is a good idea for all to be in a state of grace and to have confession done confession of the sins recently to avoid the risk of being scandalized by the knowledge of the evil one During some moments in our prayers we must kneel down although it is good to be comfortable and serene during the most of the time It is recommended to anoint the influenced person with the holy oil during the prayer of deliverance especially when you start to ask lord to cast out the enemy it is also recommended to sprinkle holy water in the place and also to make a sign of cross in the sections where appears the sign of cross we must pause bless ourselves and bless those who are praying for it is advisable to make copies of the prayers for everyone present there this way there is more con- concentration although one person should read the prayers loudly and clearly but everyone must leave them in their hearts we must read every word in the scripture and read it very slowly as we are waiting for the response to our prayers after every sentence Those who have received the gift of tongues may praise God in tongues during the prayers remembering the words of Jesus Christ about not worrying in the court that that is being before the accuser since the holy spirit will speak for us and for our heavenly father will command the enemy to go out of the situation or person we are praying for 
These prayers may be repeated as often as possible until obtaining total deliverance. Whenever a priest exorcism is done in cases of possession, very seldom the devil leaves in the first session unless it is a case of influence which only requires faith and determination from that influenced person. Here we may understand better. Mark 16 is to 15 when Jesus gives the uh, believers the power to cast out evils as a sign accompanied by the gift of tongues and the gift of healing. Since it is the spirit that com commands and not ourselves, we are never contradicting the church during these prayers. He who prays for the benefit of his brother is giving glory to God, which says in James chapter 5, 19 to 20. But you have to be aware of these warnings. The devil knows beforehand that we are preparing a prayer to the to this end. Normally unexpected things may occur like problems and misunderstandings, the perturb. Those who are going to do the prayer, cars don't start, unexpected programs, locks that doesn't open, keys that break, and other incredible things may happen to cancel the prayer meeting. It is recommended that those taking part in the prayers attend Mass during the day and with an anticipation of a Holy Mass offering the precious blood of Jesus Christ for the deliverance of the person who requires it. When we start the prayers, we must not pay attention to the enemy if there is a manifestation, especially with lies or blasphemies. Our prayers are directed to God, not to the devil. Our conversation is with God. We cannot interrupt it by having a dialogue with the devil. We must not be afraid of any noises, movements or gestures or scary noises made by the one who being prayed over or we must not even be afraid even if our legs are trembling. This is a natural to feel but we must not interrupt our prayer by having a dialogue with the enemy. Our faith must remain firm in the power of God and that is going to bring the deliverance of a suffering soul. It is advisable to speak with the person in question and make him feel repentance for his sins and to confirm his faith in the power of Christ for his deliverance. At the same time, these prayers cannot be said at any distance with some effectiveness. Since we don't have any power or sanctity, it is God who who is doing his work by listening to our sincere prayer full of faith. We must not allow ourselves to be taken away by curiosity or having this encounter with the devil. After all, we are the children of God created in his image. The devil is also his creation and we must not be too impressed. He is acting according to his evil nature. We are praying according to the spirit of God who leads us to seek his glory. Thank you for listening. God bless.